Solar activity remains elevated this week with pockets of fast wind keeping us up at active conditions and a new region rotates onto the earth-facing disk, giving amateur radio operators something to smile about. Those stories and more in the news this week. Solar activity remains elevated this week. We're dealing with a finger-like coronal hole that has rotated into the Earth's strike zone. It's only sending us a small pocket of fast wind, but it's enough to keep us up at active conditions, which should keep you aurora photographers happy. We also have two more uh, small coronal holes that will be sending us some more small pockets of fast wind. Once again, will probably keep us up to active conditions easily through the next week or so. But the big news is region 2687. It's a new active region that's rotating into uh, Earth view right now. And as promised, it is raising the much needed solar flux for you amateur radio operators. We have now bumped back up into the marginal conditions. So you should enjoy some decent radio propagation here over the next two weeks. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, you can see we're still extremely quiet when it comes to X-ray flux and therefore also the solar flux. But back on the 12th, we saw a little bit of a rise. That was from region 2687 that has rotated onto the Earth-facing disk. We've even popped a couple C-class flares because it is showing a little bit of activity. And of course, I'm having flashbacks to region 2673 that gave us all those X-class flares. But we, right now, the region looks to be reasonably quiet. So we're not looking at it as being an M-Flare player, but it is giving us that much needed solar flux for you amateur radio operators so that we're back into marginal conditions and you can enjoy some propagation. Switching to solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually had a big solar storm was back on the 7th. That was from that huge coronal hole that gave us a lot of fast wind. Things didn't die down till almost the 11th. Now we're sitting in active conditions from the second part of that coronal hole. It's the second finger that's kind of caught us here. So the active conditions will probably last for the next day or so on and off, and then it will die down maybe for the next couple days and then pick back up again as these other coronal holes begin to throw their pockets of fast wind at us. It'll probably keep us at active conditions sporadically throughout the week before things begin to really quiet down. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are dealing with the fast wind from that coronal hole we've been dealing with for about two weeks now. This is that second finger of, of fast wind that's coming, and it's bumped us up to active conditions, but almost sporadically. NOAA is giving us at high latitudes about a 20 to 30 percent chance of a major storm. At mid latitudes, we're only looking at about a 5 to 15 percent chance of a minor storm, but this should kind of go up and down through uh, the rest of the week as we have other pockets of fast wind that will be hitting us from these other coronal holes. So we could easily bump up to storm conditions and we'll have to kind of watch it very carefully to see what the Earth's magnetic shield is going to do. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green and when it comes to solar flares. We do have new region 2687 that has rotated into Earth view, but it is not a risk for radio blackouts right now, even though it's a very big region. The nice thing about this region is that it has raised the solar flux to bring it back into the marginal levels. This is a really good Nice kiss for you amateur radio operators who've been needing that solar flux to come up so radio propagation can resume. And this will give you a nice gift over the next two weeks while this region remains in Earth view. So the space weather this week remains elevated. We do have some pockets of fast wind that are hitting us sporadically. It's bumped us up to active conditions and probably will keep us there. So your aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, you should be extremely happy because you probably have some good chances for some decent aurora. And at mid latitudes, your aurora photographers, keep yourself on standby because we could easily bump up to storm levels depending upon how Earth's magnetic shield wants to react to this, these pockets of fast wind. And that's going to last over the next week or so. Now, you GPS operators at high latitudes, you're probably fine unless you're dealing with things just right underneath the aurora. At that point, you got to worry a little bit about your GPS reception. At low latitudes, you are probably extremely happy because these storms are kind of leveling out the atmosphere for you so you can enjoy some better GPS reception at night after sundown. Now, you amateur radio operators should also be pretty happy because we have region 2687 that's now rotated onto the Earth-facing disk and is giving us some wonderful and much-needed solar flux that is going to keep us up at marginal conditions and allow you to have some decent propagation 
easily over the next two weeks. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.